when it comes to weight loss, you folks have been tremendously successful. You have. You're good at doing this. You're, let, me, let me say these things. Can everybody hear me? I think this is an important talk tonight. You're really good at doing this. You're very successful. Let's take our friend Sandy Gregg. Sandy, I've never known anybody that can do this as well as Sandy Gregg. I've never known anybody that can do discipline like Sandy Gregg. I've never known anybody that can do weight loss like Sandy Gregg. I've never known anybody that can even compete with the girl and do what she does when she makes up her mind to do it. But we all know of her past struggles, her past struggles. She's been very candid about those past struggles, the ups and downs, losing 100, putting on 100, losing 50, putting on 50. We know she shared with us, she's been vulnerable and she has shared her past struggles with many of us and very much an encourager. Yes, ma'am, Vicki. She's good at doing this, but we've got to move from being good at doing this over to being good at being this. Let me try to say that again. We've got to stop being good at doing it. This group's good at it. You lose it, and then you relapse. You're good at doing it. You should be saluted. I mean, you've really cracked the code and found the solution to doing it. But maybe your struggle, your struggle is in being it. There's a big difference between doing and being. And when you step, off, step away from being good at doing it and start being good at being it, it's going to make a major impact in your life. I'm going to try to explain that tonight. We're human beings. And I've said, I believe that we're spiritual beings having a human, a temporary human experience. And we sometimes forget that we're children of the Most High God. It's kind of like if you watch the comic book movies, that'd be like Thor forgetting that he came from a God. We come from the God. We're a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. And during this human experience, we get good at doing things, but we're not always good at being what we need to be. Maybe God will give me the right words here in a minute so that it will connect with somebody. This has been a big one on my heart that God has been troubling my waters with and about because I got some personal demons that I deal with. I can lose my optimism and I can lose my positivity if I'm not careful. I'm good at doing what I do, but I forget to just be who I am sometimes. Travis, this don't make much sense. Well, I think it will if you'll stay with me. We're not human doings, we're human beings. We're human beings. Thank you, Scott. We run around each and every day. I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do this, I need to do that. And we're, we're, we're operating through life this group, because you're a successful group, with the white knuckle philosophy. 
I got, hold on, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. And eventually, you lose your grip. And instead of getting back up, you get discouraged with yourself because you didn't do good. You didn't do good. So you get discouraged with yourself and you quit for a while. But the, the spiritual being that you are eventually says, all right, now it's time to get back going. But unfortunately, by that time, you went full circle and you're having to start over again. We've got to get good at self-love, self-acceptance, and just being. Don't do Shibboleth, be Shibboleth. Well, what is Shibboleth? It's a lifestyle of self-discipline. Instead of saying, I got to do self-discipline, say, I am self-discipline. And you say it over and over and over. Let's look at the scripture. Now, I'm not reading this. I'm not reading any verses yet. I got one pulled up I want to read, but God give me an unction on something else. In the beginning, Moses said to God, Moses said, how can I go and talk to Pharaoh? Pharaoh won't listen to me when I tell Pharaoh to let the people go, to let my people go, to let your people go. He won't listen to me. Who am I? Who will I say sent me? And God said, you say, I am that I am sent you. You just go and you say, I am that I am sent me. Now, we fast forward, and by the way, if you look at the book, it's what Scott put there, right there, right there. Scott just put it. Capital I, capital A, capital M. In other words, I just be. What do you want me to be? Fill in the blank. What do you want me to be? Just fill in the blank. So now we fast forward and we find God in the flesh in the New Testament and his name is Emmanuel. His name is Jesus. His name is Wonderful Counselor. His name is Everlasting Father. And Jesus said, capital I, capital A, capital M. For all you Bible believers, that's a wink at the Old Testament where Christ was hidden, he went back to that time to say prophecy fulfilled. Now I'm gonna fill in the blank. And he said, I am the way. He didn't say I do the way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And are you ready for this one, Reloaded Group? I am the resurrection. And so are you. You're his children. He says, I'm going to go away. And you want me to go away because if I don't go away, I can't send the Holy Ghost to live inside of you. I can't send the Comforter who will teach you all things. And all the things that you've seen me be, you'll be those things and more. He's given you authority over the diet devil. You don't have to do this. See, we go look in the mirror. And we say, that's who I am. You say, that's who I am. I looked in the mirror for years. The eyes are the windows to the soul and I would look in my eyes and the language in my head would be, I hate you. When I lost everything I had, I hit my head on the mirror, cracked the mirror, stupid. Hated myself. Mad at myself, angry at myself. I said, this is all you are. It's so all you are ever going to amount to, you failure. The 
But see, it's not what we see in the mirror that is who we are. We think that what we see in the mirror is who we are. So somebody overweight looks in the mirror and they think that's who I am. They lose a little weight and then they go right back to being who they thought they were, who they see in the mirror. We're too taken up with the, the outer shell. We're too taken up with changing the neck down from the out from the exterior instead of changing the things on the inside of how we think. It's not who you see in the mirror that is who you are. It's who you don't see when you look in the mirror. That's who you are. Did you hear that? You got it backwards just like I did. It's what you don't see in that mirror that is the real story. You are love, you are joy, you are peace, you are patience, you are gentle with yourself and others, you are good, you are humble, you are faithful. The faith is inside of you to move mountains and you are full of self-discipline. You're a disciplined freak. And because you look in the mirror and you see an overweight body, you don't tell yourself that over and over and over to rewire the brain. I am self-disciplined. I lay my head on my pillow at night and my sleep is sweet because I did my best. That's who I am. That's who I be. And that's where you've got to get to. It's not what you're seeing in the mirror that you need to hang on to anymore. It's what you don't see in that mirror. Let me read this scripture to you. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. I have the right to do anything. I have the right to do anything. If I want to eat myself to death, I can do it. If I want to drink myself to death, I can do it. I have the right to do these things. I'm a, I, I'm a free man and you're a free woman. I've got the right to do these things, scripture says. But not everything that I have the right to do is beneficial to me and those that I love. The scripture says I have the right to do anything but I will not be mastered by anything. I have the right to do anything, and I can and I will, but I will not be mastered by it. I will not be obsessed by the cultural influences and the cultural voices. I won't do it. Let them mock me. Let them make fun of me. Let them ridicule me. Let them persecute me. I will not be mastered by the cultural voices that say, eat whatever you want, as much as you want, as often as you want. Go look in the mirror. This is who you are. The world don't know who I am because the mirror don't tell the whole picture. What defines me is the things you can't see. What defines you is the things that cannot be seen. It's time that we snap out of this and get this done. We have a rebirth. Travis, I've been saved before. I've had an experience of grace. Well, look, some don't believe in what saved, always saved, and so on and so forth. I, I do. I could, I could elaborate on why I believe that, but I won't. But I can tell you this. I'm getting saved every day. I get saved every day. Well, you just said you believe one saint, I do, but I believe he's sanctifying me. I get saved every day. I get a new experience of grace every single day as I conform to the image of Christ, little by little, each and every day, in mind, in body, in spirit, in soul. 
I'm conforming to who it is that I am supposed to be. And when I slip up, I don't get mad at myself. It's no, it's no more me that do it, but a little bit of sin that still is being rooted out of me. We're too hard on ourselves. We're too hard on other people. And it causes relapse. It does. It causes relapse. It causes you to want to give up. You've got to be tough on yourself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buffet the flesh and be tough on yourself, but love yourself. And when you do slip up after doing your best, get back up, get back moving, because it's who you are. It's not what you're doing. <clears throat> Read you a few more scriptures, and then I want to show you some stuff on the board. We're not to be gluttons, children. We have the right to be if we want to be free moral agents, but it's sin. It goes against ourself. And if you could possibly hurt God, it hurts God. I don't believe you can hurt God. That would be taken away from God. God's not like us. We try to make God in our image instead of us trying to act more and behave more uh, like we're in his image. Philippians 3.19 says, Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. Proverbs 23, 20 through 21. Be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and slumber will clothe them <laughs> with rags. Proverbs 23, 2. And put a knife to your throat if you're given to appetite. It would be better. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and you are the temple. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit it. And we could go on and on and on. They tempted God with the food they craved. So back to the little salvation thing, you need to get saved every day. You need to have a rebirth every day. You need to have a rebirth every day. You need to get born again every single day so that you don't relapse, okay? All right, so I'm going to show you some stuff on the board tonight that has to do with strategy. I want to drive some principles home that are meaningful, tell you why they work the way they do. I want to encourage you to pick back up your, your weekly timing chart your weekly uh, time and chart and journal, if you've, if you've let that go, please do review our rules. There are rules that prevent relapse, nightstand rules. You need, you need to, every night, every morning, I'm reviewing those goals. That keeps me fired up. I have a rebirth every morning around, it, around my goals. All right, so, Let's look at our weekly timing chart. All right, we've got a week. Let's, let's put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay? We're starting our journey or we're restarting it. Can everybody hear me okay? Let me get the mic a little closer. Still got to work on this little room here, get it set up. Weekly timing chart. I've been doing this now for over a decade, keeping a weekly timing chart. I don't know where I would be without my weekly timing chart. I don't know where I would be. Because the scales can be so discouraging, my weekly timing chart is really an opportunity to, for me to look back over the course of weeks and months and see my effort and then connect my effort to my results, make the proper association so that I keep becoming what I'm supposed to become. Or else you'll get it in your mind that you're doing your best when you're really not. 
and you're not losing weight and you're actually gaining a little weight and you'll get discouraged. But if you look at a weekly timing chart, it's going to tell the truth about your effort. And I would say there's very few people on our planet Shibola that keeps their weekly timing chart. I think it's, I think that's something that if I could get every, if I could make everybody keep a journal on a weekly timing chart, we'd be ahead of the game. So we all know what a perfect day is. This is a savvy, experienced group. And we know that it's perfect or it's not perfect. Let your yeas be yay, your nays be nay. It's right or it's wrong, and we're tough with ourselves. And if we so much as lick the cheese dust off a Dorito, then that's a holiday, right? So let's talk about the science of that. So I get started, okay? I had a weekend, let's start before Monday. I had a weekend, been off the program for a while, knew I was going to get started on a Monday, and I've just been hog trophing it for weeks and months. I knew I was going to start on a Monday, and I just picked out all, all weekend. So now I'm full of water and sugar. I get started on Monday, and I have breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, dinner for the Holy Spirit. I had a true perfect day. I followed, I observed the water component. I observed the journaling component. I observed the food combination component. I observed the portion control component. And I timed my meals. I had a perfect day. And I bless the name of the Lord. It was a great day. Fantastic day. Great day. Perfect. Feel better already. Go to bed and I think, why did I ever quit this? Does that happen to anybody? So then Tuesday, I'm fired up. I know I'm not supposed to weigh. I weigh in anyway. I weigh in anyway. And I'm down four pounds in one day. It happens. I'm down four pounds in a day. In fact, this past weekend, I had the worst hog trough day for Gabe's graduation that I've had in probably a year. And I put on like eight pounds in a day. And then I drove back to Florida the next day. And believe it or not, I didn't eat anything but a pack of peanuts. Paid, I paid the price. Monday morning, the weight was gone. Your body's just a big old sponge. And it, it, any time that I consume, I haven't had carbs and I haven't had uh, starch and sugar, I'm going to pull in water into the muscles and I'm going to pull in glucose into the muscles. And, and there's over eight pounds in one gallon of water. So everything I'm drinking, I'm just pulling in, pulling in, pulling in. That's why you feel bloated, you feel swollen. So now I'm getting started and I'm cleaning up that. And in one day I dropped four pounds, right? And Tuesday I'm so fired up, I had another perfect day. I had another perfect day. Now, I've gotten rid of excess sugar and excess water. And now if on Wednesday I'm in a calorie deficit, I follow the components, I'm going to start losing a little bit of fat. That's why I said last night to another class, first month of a restart, you'll lose 10% of your body weight if you put the effort in. Then after that, it's 4% a month. Then when you get down to the last 10, 15 pounds, it's, a, it's about 2% a month if you're doing your best. So Wednesday, I get up, and lo and behold, I'm down six pounds on Wednesday morning. Y'all still with me? Chat hadn't moved in a little bit. There's only a few of us. I just want to make sure I had to have a technician work on my internet today. Y'all still good? All right. So Wednesday, I, you know, I don't really get what we're talking. It's not dawning on me that now is a fat burning day. I just know I've lost six pounds and I'm stinking happy about it. So Wednesday's going to be a great fat burning day. And you really nail it because you're super, super 
fired up. You're super fired up. It's an awesome, incredible day. And now you're in efficient fat burning. You've got fire, baby. You're burning the fat. You're losing the inches, the pounds, or the jiggly, itchy stuff, the good stuff, the stuff that makes a difference in your health, your life, your appearance. But Thursday morning, after nailing it on Wednesday, you get on the scales. And you're only down a half a pound. And you're like, what? I did better on Wednesday. I did intermittent fasting on Wednesday. I was so fired up over my results. I thought I'd even try a little harder and I didn't lose as much as when I didn't try so hard. It's because you don't understand what's coming off your body, what's coming off your tail. This is when you're burning the booty. The water's gone, the sugar's gone. It comes and goes fast. Notice I said it comes and goes fast. It comes on fast, it'll go fast. But fat come on slow. And it'll go pretty fast, but not as fast as the water and the sugar. So Thursday, you're a little down and out, a little downtrodden, a little discouraged, but you go on, you wheel yourself into it. You're, you're asking all the wrong questions in your head. You're going, why is this so hard? Wrong question. Because your brain's good like a computer. It'll spit out an answer and it'll go, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? It is so hard. Instead of going, why is it so fun? Why is it so easy? You know, ask the right questions. But anyway, Thursday, why is it so hard? I'm going to do it though. I'm going to do it. I'm going to white knuckle it. And you do. You got another day of efficient fat burning. You get up Friday morning, you weigh, and you like, what? Only a half a pound again? What the heck? Now you're down seven pounds, and you go post. You go post. Y'all see it all the time. You see it all the time in the group. You go post, and you say, what's up? What gives? I did my best for two days. I lost a half a pound on Wednesday and a half pound on Thursday. And then I post something. I go, well, that's not bad. That's a lost fast. No, it ain't. I go, yeah, how much, you, how, how long have you been doing? Been doing it all week? How much have you lost all week? Seven, but I only lost one the last two days. I know right there. I've either got to rewire the brain quickly or I'm going to lose you. And most time I lose. It's just, it is this, this space that I'm in, that I feel like I've been called to be in, that's just the way it is. Going to lose most. I just hope I love on people enough that when they're really ready, they'll come back. That's the way it works. But that's what happens. You see it every day. If you look for it, you'll see it. Similar stories. Now, Friday, what happens? What happens on Friday? Because you don't understand what's really going on on Wednesday and Thursday. I mean, the fat is just flaking off of you, baby. Think about 30 days. If you kept the fire burning, EFB, 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 every day, every day, every day, you should do it with a smile on your face. Get the permagrin going on. A permanent grin. People say, what's you grin about? I just can't help it. I'm just grinning. Because I got the fat just flaking off of me. Flaking off my waistline, flaking, flaking off my booty, about a quarter pound, half pound of flaking off, flaking off my thighs, my calves, everywhere. It's just flaking off, flaking off. Woo -wee! That's what's happening. But you looked at the scales. You didn't understand how fat comes off the body. You, you made the best progress these two days, not these two days. Then Friday comes. I'm going to do it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. That gun it. Friday. Talk to your spouse. Spouse says, what are we going to do tonight? Well, I got to eat that approved stuff. Yeah. I got to, though. I got to lose this weight. 
your friends call up. Say, hey, y'all, we over at the El Nepal Mexican restaurant. You want to come over? Hey, baby, you want to go over to the Mexican restaurant? Can't. I don't know what I have yet over there. I don't understand it. It's too confusing. He said something about a bowl of chicken soup with no rice and about three soft chicken tacos. If I go, I want cheese dip, and I don't know if I can have that. Well, we don't want to miss out on going out with our friends tonight. Ain't they something you can have? Yeah, I'll try to avoid the chips. So you go and you sit down, and now everybody there at the Mexican restaurant that you're eating with, they start eating them devil chips, and you ain't packed the survival kit. You high farce doing it. You ain't packed the survival kit. You didn't look in the food library to see what you could have, and you don't understand food combinations yet. Or you just ain't into it. And then they dip the devil chip in the cheese dip. You didn't tell them to bring your sliced slice bell peppers so you could do that. But anyway, because you don't want to watch the videos. So they bring in the devil chips, you begin to watch other people eat them. And you get a case of the FOMO, fear of missing out. You might die before you ever get to see another chip and cheese dip. And you dip the chip, they, they dip the chip in the cheese dip and you're trying to white knuckle it. And all of a sudden, you get sweat beads popping out your brow because the FOMO is so freaking bad. You may never get to break bread with these beloved people again and you're having to miss out and they got the cheese. And everything goes into slow motion. I've been there. And it's like, are you sure you don't want these chips too? You know, it's that bad. And you go, give me them chips. He said I can have a holiday. He said it. So we have a holiday on Friday. And you get up Saturday and think, well, I lost seven. I bet I put on one last night. I had chips. I had cheese dip. I had chimichangas. I had rice. I had rice. Whatever, at a Mexican restaurant, I mean, everything, it's got different names, but it's all the same. It's uh, fried meat, fried cheese, fried vegetables, <laughs> fried rice. Everything fried. So you get up, you, you lost seven, and Saturday morning, you I bet I put on a pound. That gummy, and, and you put on four pounds, five pounds, and you're like, what? I worked so hard all week, and I put almost all of my weight back on one night. What's the use? And then what happens on Saturday? holiday Travis are you is this really true how you what you putting up yes give or take it's just it's just numbers give or take a digit here and a digit there this is exact how do you know it's how it works it's called experience it's called journaling it's called experience it works this way and if you'll buy in tonight just this, just this one class would change your life. Sunday, right? Yeah, you say, I'm not even weighing. I put on four Saturday. I mean, Friday. I know I put on four Saturday, but you didn't. You, you put back on what you lost. So you're back to square one. Sunday, you go to church. Go over there to the Church of Christ. Go to the Episcopal Church, wherever you go. And then all they talking about when they get out of church and standing in the yard, where are we going to go eat, y'all? Where are we going to go eat? Y'all want to go to the Mexican restaurant? No. What about Cracker Barrel? Yeah, let's go to Cracker Barrel. Eat some cornbread. So we go to Cracker Barrel. Didn't get the spicy grilled catfish and green beans and avoid the cornbread. We didn't get the beans and the greens and avoid the cornbread or the grilled chicken salad and use approved salad dressing. Didn't do that that would have been enjoyable. 
and we would have finished the week with a little weight loss. Because if we finish every week with a little weight loss in a few weeks, that's a lot of weight loss. Woo! Get your mind right. But we don't. We have a hog trough day. Boom. Now there goes 80% of our people right there. There goes 80% of our people, the common people. Common people are gone after that. One day they'll become uncommon because they'll start hearing the Holy Spirit speak to them, tell them that you're not common, you're uncommon. But people that behave like common people, listen to the cultural voices, they're done. But 20% of the people, they got grit. Now, dadgummit, they go back to class, they learn a little more, and they start over. Monday's a good one. Tuesday's a good one. Wednesday, just life happens. They're back down. They're back. They're, now, look, they finish the week, status quo or small game. Now, two days into it, they're getting back off that fluid retention and whatnot. Because this, this week was a maintenance type of week. This is a maintenance type of week. 12 holidays a month is a maintenance type of week. So here, now they're back with a little net loss. And on Wednesday, on Wednesday, a co-worker brings donuts. And you eat two bites of a donut. Ugh. It's a holiday, whether you marked it that way or not. Because here's what's happening. Anytime, even if it's low calorie, anytime the food you consume doesn't have adequate amounts of protein and fiber to neutralize the fat bus, then you get a secretion of growth hormone. Let's, let's, let's call it what it is. Your pancreas just released growth hormone. You had high levels of growth hormone all weekend in your system. I don't want it to work this way, Brother Travis. Sorry. It's chemistry. It's the laws of nature. Travis, my pancreas don't work. Well, eating like that and you're diabetic, then you had to administer quite a bit of growth hormone. So you've got lots of growth hormone. Forget, not only did you pull in the water, pull in the sugar, you've got a lot of growth hormone. Listen, People that power lift that need to be huge, people that are linemen in the NFL, uh, bodybuilders in, in a growth bulk, bulk, bulking season, off season when they grow, they administer insulin to themselves to grow. It's growth hormone. How can you lose weight with growth hormone constantly surging through your bloodstream? You can't, that's the answer, you can't. Then it took two days of perfect eating to lower the growth hormone so that we could get back into efficient fat burn. And then we eat something that wasn't worth it and get a little more growth hormone. Thursday, you're back on. Not inefficient fat burning. We got to start over. Friday, you're determined and you do it. Saturday could be a perfect day, but it ends up being a hog trough day. And Sunday, you, you, you learn a little more in class this week. So you had a perfect day. 
But what did we accomplish this week? We had one, two, three, four, five perfect days, but no EFB, only two holidays. We might end this week with a pound or two loss because we did the right thing more than the wrong thing. But it's not an efficient week. You come back to class, you learn. And now Monday's a perfect day, and by Tuesday, you're back in EFB. We've got fire. We've got fire. Wednesday, something was said in class by somebody. Some You're tired of hearing the teacher, but somebody said something in class. Another peer of yours that's doing great. And if they can do it by George, you can do it. And for whatever reason, you just locked it down and rip, 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 ripped off the knob. You didn't say this is hard. You didn't say it's going to take so long. You said, wait a minute, this is fast and easy. You mean I can get up and have a real good breakfast burrito for breakfast? You mean I can go to Wendy's and get a Wendy's chili for lunch? And you mean for dinner I can have uh, some chicken breast and green beans? I like all of that stuff, and that helps me lose weight. So why don't I just lock it down? We went back to El Nepal. This time I got three soft chicken tacos, threw away the shells, put sauce all over the meat. I dipped my bell peppers in the cheese dip as my snack for the day. Got out of there unscathed. Saturday, they went to Red Lobster. It was endless shrimp night. And I got scampi and broccoli and said, keep them endosperm biscuits away from me. And Sunday, now I'm losing weight. People says, Lord have mercy, you look good. What are you doing? That fires you up. And now you go out to the Longhorns after church and you get you, uh, they got an eight ounce steak there and you cut it in half. You're gonna take half of it home because the portion's too big but you munch on your steak and some asparagus and you avoid the bread and all the salad dressings and you just eat slow and you enjoy it, people's brat, and you just, you lock that sucker down. Now we look at a week where up here was status quo and I lost two and in this week I lost six. In three weeks I'm down eight pounds. Living life. But I can look at my chart and I don't have to guess. I know what the heck I'm doing. Now this next week, I'm so fired up, I can whip a bear with a switch. And I do some INF days. I do intermittent fasting on Monday, on my busy days, because I'm not thinking about food all day. And I eat, uh, on Monday, I eat at six and six. On Tuesday, I eat at 12 and six. On Wednesday, I eat at 12 and eight. And now it's like a blowtorch times two. And Thursday, I do another intermittent fasting day. And I did a, um, let's say that I did another 12 and six there. Eating perfect meals. Did like I did today. You know what I had today? G butter in a hurry. I'm eating way too much of that stuff. And I'm getting the fart so bad I can't stand it. But anyway, G butter is quick, it's easy, I like it. If you eat a whole jar of it, it'll get you in trouble. And if you eat a whole jar in three days, like I have, not bad trouble, just little pooty poot here and there. Nothing that anybody can hear. It ain't them big loud ones, it's them little ones like poo -poo 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 -poo. Anyway, so I had G butter and then I had tonight, I, I made me a homemade crab cake with some spinach. That's a terrific intermittent fasting day, blow torch kind of day. And I'm six foot three, 196 pounds, and, and these little women telling me I'm starving to death. Lord have mercy, if you was eating what I was eating, you wouldn't think you starving. And I'm not losing weight rapidly, I'm in maintenance. So here we go Friday, you'd lose weight rapidly if you're not in maintenance, but anyway. And then Friday, okay, I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna chill. I'm just gonna have a perfect day. So I got fire. Saturday, I have a perfect breakfast, a perfect lunch, but I'm gonna have a holiday and I'm gonna enjoy it guilt-free. I earned it. 
I earned it. Look how hard I'm working. I earned it. And I have it. And it's a bad one. Why do I care that the last two weeks, man, I, I, I up until here, let's say Friday morning from here, I was down 12 pounds. So I have a holiday, a bad hog trough day, and I get up Sunday and I giggle because I love my program. Why wouldn't I do it? it? I only get discouraged if I don't want to do it and I'm not going to do it. I'm not discouraged. I'm just going back to what I love more than the holiday. So I have a little holiday and I'm up four. I'm back to the eight on Sunday morning because I gained four of it. But then I'm right back to having my perfect meals on Sunday. And then I weigh in here, and now on this next Monday, I'm down 10, and I'm back to having perfect days. And then I'm back in EFB on Tuesday. I'm living the life. And I look at my chart, and I don't get discouraged. I look, and I say, I want more than 10. I put in more effort. That's how it works. We don't get what we wish for. We get what we work for. That's about all I got for you now. Any any comments and questions? Anybody got anything tonight? Did this help help you? Did this bring up some stuff you already knew, but get it back top of consciousness? <laughs> Funny as heck. It's real life. Real life is always the funniest, isn't it? I was told today at work that if I keep losing, I'm gonna waste away. Yes, this culture will tell us that, right? Thank you, Sandy. I'm pulling for you, girl. Hey, Patricia. Weekly timing chart. I wish I could, I hope somebody will get it in their heart and mission to start posting their weekly time. People, lots of people posting weekly timing charts every day. That would inspire other people to do it. And y'all know I'm telling you the truth that if you'll do it and inspire others to do it, we can rely on the chart. See, I needed a way to detach from the scales. Now, what we put on the board does no good if the definitions aren't met. A perfect day has to be a perfect day. I wish that were cold or hot, not lukewarm. But if we could all inspire many other people to do it and get other people on board with doing it, they'd start relying on, this is an effort chart here. This is an effort chart. Yes, post that, you know, maybe I'll start that mission. Maybe I'll start that mission and maybe some of y'all will help me do it because it is so important. Carrie, congratulations. Yes. Um, now, <clears throat> Vicky says, Travis, can you address the metabolism increase with the streaks of perfect days? Your metabolism, the more perfect days you have, the more fat sucking sound you're gonna hear in your, in your mind. So you're building the metabolism. It's like this. If I put good wood on a good fire and then give the fire space, give it some oxygen, it's going to burn brighter and brighter and brighter. Your metabolism is a fire. And when you're building that metabolism and you get a good streak, you're building the metabolism, but when you put holiday food on it, it's like putting water on your fire. Now I'm not talking about your scale weight, I'm talking about the way your body metabolizes fat. You have to hear a lot of people say you need to take cheat days and eat junk food to stimulate your metabolism. That is a lie of the devil. You never stimulate your metabolism by eating junk. I don't care if you've never, if people say, well, I've hit a plateau, so I'm gonna go eat some junk. All that does is free your mind up. It does not 
help your metabolism. It cannot help your metabolism. That's a bunch of junk. It can't help it. It only hurts it. Now, it might help your mind stay in the game to go eat some smothered and covered hash browns at the Waffle House, but it doesn't do your metabolism any good. Maybe the mind, not the metabolism. That's like putting water on a fire. And where people say, you know, they'll say, well, but I lost weight when I did that. I wasn't losing any weight, and all of a sudden I lost weight. Well, certainly you might have removed, got rid of some waste if you eat all that greasy chili, but that don't mean you didn't store fat. You can poop and pee out more weight than the fat that you lose or gain. So it's about consistency. The more consistently I build my metabolism, the better my metabolism gets. And the more my metabolism is going to act the more I eat right and teach my metabolism how to access fat as a fuel source, the better off I'm going to be. Anytime you're training your metabolism to tap into glucose, sugar, that kind of thing, you're, you're setting yourself back. Train your body to burn fat as a fuel source. How do you do that? You eat the way we eat here. You always will experience better fat loss results when you have, there's a big difference in there, weight loss and fat loss. Fat loss is part of weight loss, but weight loss can mean a lot. You can be losing bone mass, bone, uh, excuse me, bone density, organ mass. You can be losing water, you can be losing sugar, you can be losing fat, you can be losing muscle. We want maximum fat loss. Train up a child and the way it should go and it won't depart from it. Train up the metabolism the way it should burn and it won't depart from it. Thank you, Vicky. Anybody else got anything? Keep this chart. If you're trying to lose, keep this chart six, less than six holidays per month, less than six. Thanks, Scott, man, I appreciate you. I love connecting with y'all, I, I really do. Helps me stay focused too. Yes, this class will be in the library. Thanks to Sandy, it did record. Thank you, y'all. Anybody got anything? Good night, everybody. Good to have everybody. Love you. Love you, Scott. Thanks for the positivity, Sandy, Scott. All of you. All of you. Good night, everybody. We love you. Talk to you real soon, okay? Yes, Patricia. Enjoy Europe. By the way, those of you that's been helping the ministry out, y'all all help the ministry out, but uh, we got some sweet cards and letters last couple of days and just know from the bottom of our heart how much it means to us and how much it helps. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Good night.